Hello, welcome to the Premier Scene. I'm Claire Bueno, and we are back at the London Film and Comic Con 2011. And what a way to start here on the set of Harry Potter. I predict we're going to have a magical time. Brent. Hello, hello. Where, <laughs> Where have you, you been you all my life? <laughs> Yeah, all right. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? And uh, welcome to the UK. Well, thank you so much. You've, you're, uh, you've got a big fan following over here. Oh, millions and millions, <laughs> uh, literally. And you're here at the, the London Film and Comic Con. What, do, oh, yeah. you know, what does the fans actually mean to you? The fans mean to me everything. Life itself. The fans. I, I, I don't know what I would do without them. I mean, I, well, I know what I would do without them. I'd be in the office supply business, probably. Uh, no, of course, they're, they're very important to me. And having a connection with them, as you, you know, being an actor, it's all about making a connection with people, isn't it? Well, you hope so, and, uh, and, and you hope that connection continues and flourishes. Yeah. And what are you working on at the moment? Can you share that with us? I'm working on Vivica Fox, but she see no, no, I'm sorry, <laughs> I didn't say that. Wait a minute. Uh, no, her boyfriend's there, and he's big. Um, I uh, actually, I, I have a, a web series right now. Um, it's called Fresh Hell. Fresh Hell. I would give you the link, but you can't do that this way. But what you need to do is go on to uh, YouTube and just type in one word: Fresh Hell series. And uh, we've only done five episodes so far. I'm talking right at the camera as if you're not here. It's bizarre, isn't it, uh, Claire? Uh, no, I mean, Claire. Um, it, it, anyway, go on the YouTube and Fresh Hell series, and you'll get to the chapter that has everything in it. it tell, well, well, tell us about the, what, it, what, 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 what summarize it up for us, what it's all about. Well, uh, uh, people say it's a comedy. Uh, I, I say it's a sit trage, really. Uh, kind of a situation tragedy is what it is. But I play myself. Basically, the deal is I've done something horrible uh, that we call the incident that has ruined my life, and uh, the fans hate me, uh, my family hates me, um, everyone in the uh, world hates me I, I because I've done like this a, terrible, a terrible thing. thing. And then there was the incident. What? The incident where you lost everything, your family, your home, your wealth, your career, your adoring fans. The incident, Brent. How did that feel? <laughs> oh, crap. And I'm desperately trying to get back into show business and get my life back in order. And, um, and that's sort of the mise-en-scene, whatever that means. <laughs> yeah. Is it a sort of a, a story of redemption for you? It's a story of desperation, really. Um, I, I think it's, uh, honestly, not to get too philosophical, is I think it's, it's about everybody, particularly in this recession and uh, these difficult times. Um, we have this incident that we don't tell what it is. We know what it is, and we will eventually tell what it is. But in a way, I think there's an even bigger incident that is an umbrella over the whole thing, which is making the mistake of, of having gotten older, making the mistake of having been used up and dismissed, and the way a lot of people have in their own jobs. And, you know, we all work really hard to achieve, and it's so uh, wonderfully rewarding when we finally do. But then for some people, we get kicked out, and, um, and it's that sort of desperation to get back into the fraternity that we've always wanted to be in. I think it's easier for a theatre actor to um, go cross over into uh, camera work rather than the other way around. Because a theatre actor is, it, is used to presenting the whole of himself um, and his voice and his personality, etc. Um, where, whereas the film actor finds it very difficult to fill that large space up. The theatre actor can pull it all back. And, you know. Yeah, it is. The camera less is more. Yes. Yeah, well, it's about these. It's yes. about these, really. Eye contact, isn't yes, it? absolutely. Yeah. And the, in the theatre, it's about all this. Yeah. Because you're projecting to, to an audience. Yeah, absolutely. Really. Absolutely. You've got a, hopefully a thousand people sitting out there. And, you know. and hopefully one of them's looking at you. <laughs> I, think, I don't think you've got any trouble, trouble there. And what sort of parts do you, uh, when you're choosing a script, do you look at the script? What it is that you, is it the whole story that you're looking at or is it something 
Well, you're, you're, you, you're, 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 you're usually offered a script and a part at the same time. And then you read the script and see what, um, in what context your character, your part, is in, in the context of the, whole, of the whole play. Yes, you read the whole play. Um, if I'm doing a Shakespearean part, I, I tend to kind of learn the whole, the whole play. Because what other people are doing, what other people are saying, are so important to what you do and say. And what is it, do you think, if you're yourself as a Shakespearean actor, that Shakespeare never goes out of fashion? No, happen. no, it's so universal because every, every emotion, every situation, he kind of thought of and it had experienced. This is extraordinary, quite extraordinary that um, that should come out of one, one brain, and I don't think it did. In your 51 years, is there a particular part that's affected you the most as, as an actor and as a person? I think there are three now. And they're all classical parts, but two are Shakespeare. One is Hamlet, one is Lear that I've just finished, and one was a genius play called Cyrano de Bergerac. Um, that is an extraordinarily affecting play and requires of an actor an extraordinary range, physically, vocally, emotionally, psychologically. It's a wonderful play. I actually saw you, and it was a, a, a Uh, the, uh, the Albert Hall. Yes. Yeah, and that, for me to see, it's obviously as a more seasoned actor, yeah. probably not likely to play Hamlet at that point in his life, obviously. So yeah. to see you do that, that was so moving for me. Oh, well, that was wonderful. I was very frightened, I remember. Were you really? You didn't know I was shitting myself, <laughs> did you? <laughs> <laughs> but I was. To walk out onto the Albert Hall in front of 5,000 people and launch into a Hamlet soliloquy wasn't easy. <laughs> and in time to the music. Michael, welcome to the UK in the London Film and Comic Con. What's it like being here today? It's awesome. There's like a billion people here. It's, it's pretty good. So uh, I'm having a good time meeting lots of great people. You've been in a lot of cult films. So what's it like being able to connect to the, the audiences that have followed it so avidly? Yeah, well, when you do all these things, you kind of live in a bubble. You really don't get to talk to these people. Then, so getting out here and meeting, shaking hands, and signing autographs with people, it's like you really realize uh, how kind of important it is to them and how much of a fan they are. And, it's the, and the impact that it's actually had on them as well, isn't it? Yeah, sometimes in a kind of detrimental way, I guess, when it comes to horror film. You know, some people have like been touched for the rest of their lives. So that's kind of, uh, <laughs> kind of strange, and, but good. And, and tell us, what are you up to at the moment? Well, I just uh, finished a few episodes of a Disney uh, TV show called uh, Pair of Kings. Uh, finally, I did something my kids can watch, which is kind of nice. Uh, I was just on Chuck, uh, the TV show Chuck, uh, about a month ago. I had a great little part on that. And I uh, currently have a film that's out there in the film festivals called Visitation. Uh, it's doing really well. And I have a film coming out here in a couple months called Bloodshot. And I play a vampire that works for the CIA. And my job is to kill terrorists. So. And actually, uh, uh, Christopher Lam Lambert, who's only a few uh, seats down from me, is the president of the United States in the film, so pretty good. So, and, and the film that you've got going on in the festivals at the moment, is this the, the script that you've written? No, no. Uh, the one I've written that's, that was op that's it's been optioned and we're going to uh, start shooting here in the uh, beginning of uh, 2012, it's called Thug, T-H-U-G. And it's, uh, it's not sci-fi, it's not horror, it's a drama, action, dra action drama. It's pretty good. What's inspired you to write it? Uh, well, it's, it has a lot of my own personal life in there and, you know, and talking with people and friends of mine who are in the business and in the business of writing, they say, hey, you should really put that down on paper. So I did and it turned out to be a pretty good story. So, Does, it, does that make it richer because you are drawing on so many personal experiences, do you think? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've in writing it, I, I can't tell how many times I'll be writing a scene and I'm crying. You know, I have tears streaming. My wife will walk in the room, well, what is, you know, like, what's going on? I'm like, you know, like, oh, you're doing that writing thing again. So. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it was good. It's very cathartic to be able to write that because it was something that this, that kind of story was um, always underneath that I kind of forgot about, but it was kind of nice to tell that. Yeah. And I suppose, yeah, it is like, do you, is it almost like a, taking it a deep breath and it's like, yeah, yeah, got that? Yeah, I agree. But I also changed the names to protect the innocent as much as possible. So <laughs> I don't want to be hiding from anybody when, it's, if, if, when it comes out. So. And, and, and I'm presuming that you're a fresh scriptwriter. Yep. So, yep. so what is it like being able to get a script 
into production? How competitive is it over in Hollywood? Well, I mean, you know, always the first thing is to write a good story, you know, and uh, and, it, and so I, I think I've done that, and uh, and well, people have said I have, so it's good, and and also too, you know, uh, meeting the right people and having them believe in your story and wanting to have it made, so that's always fortunate. Are you saying you start production in 2012? Yeah. That's where we're slated to start in 2012. It makes me pretty excited about it. We've got Christopher Lloyd here as yeah. well. Yeah, Chris Lloyd. Chris Lloyd says hello to me this morning when we get on the bus. I'm like, Chris Lloyd said hello to me. It's going to be right. a good day. It's going to be a good day. <laughs> so so what, what do we, when, you look, when you look at a script, what, do you, what are you thinking about when you're taking on a new part? Are you thinking about the script as a, as a macro in the whole project? Or, or do you look at the part and how you can just play that yourself, you know, the particular character that you're working on? Well, first I, first I look at the whole story. I used to look just at the character, and then I made a lot of mistakes in my career. But it was a great character. People go, yeah, but it was a crappy movie. Why'd you do that movie? It's such a great character. So now I look at, first I look at the story, and, I, and I'm envious of writers anyway, so I always think, oh, I wish I could write something that that's, that's that good. And then I look at the character, and then, uh, you know, I'd say now 50% of the time are things that are offered to me and 50% of the time are things that I audition for. And I look at the characters that I'm, let's say, auditioning for and I go, how can I still draw something of myself, a small part of myself, into playing that character? I'm never obviously going to be the entire character. None of us are. Otherwise, we'd have a very, a very short career. You know, <laughs> Hey, I just played Robert Nepper. Great. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> now I'm going to play Amber Hunt. It's like, you know, you, you always use a snippet of yourself in every character you play. I don't care who, if you call yourself a method actor or not, everybody's a method actor nowadays. You have to use something of yourselves or, or else people go, yep, you're acting. What, what's this, what's the, the, um, the part that's probably had the, the most effect on you, do you think? Um, I would say the next part that I play has had the most effect on me. I, I'm always looking to the to the future, and it's funny because every time I play a part, like let's say when I played Teddy on Prison Break, I, you know, for a minute there thought, wow, that's it, I'm done, I have nothing left to give. Um, I was wrong <laughs> because I'm I'm in it for the right reasons, and I'm in it for good reasons. I'm, I'm I never became an actor to make money or to be famous. I did it because I love acting and I love the challenge of of. Uh, you know, being able to sit down and try to figure something out. I was doing a film years ago with Kiefer Sutherland and, and we were at a party one night, we were driving back to the hotel and in the cab we said, we both agreed that acting was a lot like math. It was like, it's like an equation, you have to sort of figure things out and, and move it a little bit and say, what if you take this away, what will remain? If you add this to it, what are you going to get some more of? And it's, it's all, actors are always using you know different metaphors. Math is one of them. Uh, sports is another thing. The older I get, I realize it's it really is like a, a athletic sport. Uh, if you can throw the ball well to another actor, he's gonna he or she's gonna catch it and have a good reaction and throw it back to you. And well, it's it, so simple. That's all you have to it's do. It's acting. It's acting and reacting, isn't it? Off that's one all another. It is. And that is, chemistry. When you see good ball playing, whatever whatever that ball is in any game, you see the same thing. If you're going to kick the ball to somebody, you trust that that guy's going to be able to kick it in or kick it back to you. If you throw the ball and you, you hope to get that, you know, two points in basketball, otherwise you want to play with, you know, when, when you play with really good actors, you play with better ball players, it makes you a better ball player. And all those metaphors are constantly swimming around in us. So you get the part. And just because you get the part on a good script doesn't, you know, we've all seen those shows where they didn't end up being good. Once you have good ball players with you, chances are much better. Well, the fun still continues here at the London Film and Comic Con 2011, but we have to get back to the editing suite. I'm Claire Bueno, and you're watching Premier Scene. Excuse me, I got a phone call. R2? Yes? Okay, just give me another minute, okay? Thank you. Uh, I said it'd be a minute. Jeez, this guy is like.